By the time the Dark Horse Battalion left Helmont Province in 2011, they had 184 wounded Marines, 34 of them amputees, and 25 dead. Among them, the son of four-star Marine General John Kelly. In 2013, before he retired, Kelly spoke at a ceremony at Camp Pendleton. He urged the Marines to honor those who had served their country. And in many cases, fought and died for it. And never forget your buddies that never made it home. A decade after the survivors came home, it's still difficult to place the legacy of the unit that suffered the highest number of casualties in the war. Logan Stark collected hours of footage shot by his fellow Marines as Dark Horse pushed back against the Taliban during heavy fighting. And this was kind of in that little sweet zone before the Marine Corps started like highly regulating people filming stuff. He came back that April and by August he had left the Corps and enrolled as a student at Michigan State. During that whirlwind, he started making a documentary, interviewing members of Dark Horse. Initially, he thought he was the only one having panic attacks. And, that, and that's what I think a lot of people just didn't, and me specifically, I didn't understand. It's like, it's okay to be going through all this. Like, there's, there's reasons behind all of it. And it just didn't seem like we were, like, really good at communicating that to our peers. His documentary called For the 25 is still on his YouTube channel. Even the veterans of the most celebrated units of the war have had a tough time describing the war in Afghanistan. Marcus Chischilli lost his left leg to an IED two weeks after he arrived. Every day for that first year when I was back back in the United States was like reliving that moment. It was a, it was a really big struggle to try to figure out, you know, what my life was going to be like after that. After two years in the hospital, he is now married with small children and walking on a prosthetic. We were there to protect each other. We were there to bring each other home. We were there to fight, yes, for our country and to accomplish our mission. But every single day was about, I got you. Like, you're my brother. I'm going to make sure you get home today. Gretchen Catherwood's son, Alec, was killed in October 2010. It's, it's not an every moment of every day kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's constantly in my brain and it's always there. There are some days that are horrible and there are some days that are okay. She was in the audience when General Kelly spoke at the memorial in 2013. After the remembrance ceremony and seeing the looks in those guys' faces in their eyes, I said, there's got to be something we can do. She and her husband moved from Illinois to Tennessee, where they're building a quiet lake retreat for combat veterans to honor the Dark Horse Battalion. Just a cool, peaceful place to hang out with people who get it, who you can speak without fear of offending, um, but they can talk to each other. Really, nobody can help a combat veteran like a combat veteran. Each bedroom is named after one of the 25 who died, with plaques for six Dark Horse Marines who have since died by suicide. And I believe that they are a casualty of war every single bit as much as those who were killed in action are. It's their monument to an ongoing sacrifice in a war that cannot easily be explained. Steve Walsh, KPBS News.